Today, we are going to seal up all the little cracks in the camper box. I shouldn't say cracks, all little seams in the extrusions in the camper box now that the rear wall is put on. Come with me, let's go do this. Hey, 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 this is Casey. Thank you so much for joining back on my channel and watching. As you saw here, we finished up building that rear camper wall. The camper is now complete. Entry door is cut in. The windows and the exterior and interior joints that, that just got installed now have to all be sealed up. So let's go through this. All right, so first of all, make sure you've got clean hands because anytime you got a little caulk on your hands, it gets on your paper towels, your roll of paper towels, it gets on your bottle of rubbing alcohol, uh, your water bottle, your, you know, you got on your gloves, rip those off, replace them. Make sure we're not spreading this caulk around. Check yourself, make sure you haven't like dipped yourself into it, leaned into it anywhere. So that's one thing. So I always am trying to be really careful about that. And I'm also making sure I'm peeling the tape in a way where it's not gonna push it back onto myself or fling it onto the camper wall or something like that. And so be really, you know, conscious of all that. So I know I have my clean hands, even though I'm working without gloves at the moment, I'm working on glove size, my fingernails, so I can peel this tape off. You can see I've got the tape overlapping the seams that I just have caught. I've peeled all the way around here. I've got a couple of more pieces to peel off. I know that I have some, some good seams along here so I can peel that tape off and now I'm working on this tricky area I've got a little more up there I need to work on this other 45 degree angle which are tricky because I don't have a cap to go over them and it's just an open a butt an open butt seam at a 45 degree angle so I want to make sure that seal but really just from a, a, a visual and aesthetic piece if a little water gets in there it's only getting an extrusion it's not getting anywhere else, but nonetheless, I don't want any water getting in anywhere. And so I just want to peel it off. So I know this one's going to be messy. So I'm going to try to make it as least messy as possible. by make sure I'm peeling off little sections of tape, peeling them off the ones that are on top first and peeling them off. So that way I'm not pulling up really big chunks of, of tape that are going to fling around and so forth and that one just trying to get it off my hand it stuck to my hand the tape and then a little bit of of the sealant got out of my finger here so a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel cleans that up now one thing i have to be aware of is not only make sure my hands stay clean so i'm not spreading this anywhere but also my paper towel i am going to use this for a little bit of cleanup here and there so like here i can see a tiny little bit of of that seal and adhesive just got kind of stuck there from the tape so i want to make sure i'm not like you know spreading any more caulk from that so i clean my hand on one side of this paper towel that has a rubbing alcohol it and i'm cleaning the wall at the other side so i'm going to be cognizant of that pretty soon if i feel like that is getting loaded up with caulk and don't really have a clean edge or, or surface to clean up with i'm just going to discard it i've got my my trash can right below me here so I can put the paper towels and the discarded tape that I use this masking tape to block off these sections to mark them off and I can put them right in the, the can here so I'm not walking very far you can see probably also I have my ladder right here and I'm using my ladder right here as a stand for storing these supplies that I'm using but also I'm working low and as I start working up, I'll work up the ladder and as I go up and I peel off a piece of tape, then I'll walk back down the ladder, put it in the trash if I don't feel like I have a good clean shot to just drop it in. And when I get back down the bottom of the ladder, instead of walking back up to the top and peel off more tape there, I'll now work on tape here in the bottom again and then go back up in the ladder, peel some off, walk back down again. So I'm not going up and down the ladder more than I need to. Going up and down the ladder obviously adds a, a safety you know, risk. Every time I go up and down, there's a potential of slipping, falling, and and certainly I've had those moments where I've come really close. So I want to reduce those. So I come back in here, and again, this is going to get a little messy, but that's okay. I'm going to clean this back up, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. One of the tricks with this tape, and this, this tape is a little bit problematic of that in particular, this thinner tape that's blue, is it does coil up, and it really has been a problem with this, this tape in particular, this thinner blue tape. Uh, whatever brand it is, I don't remember. I found that the green tape, which is I believe from Frog, doesn't actually peel up as much and doesn't also rip as much. Yeah, this is Frog tape. And so I found it to work better than the blue tape that I'm using. And you know, sometimes you just get whatever's on sale. This is by Clean Release. 
uh, painter's tape. I've not found it to work as well. It also tears more easily. And one thing you don't want to have is it tearing on you because it just makes a lot more work and time and it leaves little parts behind. Then you have this residual, you have to clean up, you know, the extra tape and stuff. So really, this is worth spending a few more dollars on some better tape to make this job go a lot smoother, easier, and cleaner, especially when you're dealing with the seal and adhesive that's wet and, and you don't want to disperse it. I certainly want to be taking this tape off when it's wet because I wait till it's dry, I'm going to be ripping the sealant or the tape's going to get stuck under the sealant. I certainly don't want that. So this is really give us some nice clean lines and edges. So I'm going to start down here, and this is a tricky one for sure because it just happens to be that the only really clean edge to get to is right down up against some of the or very near some of the caulk I just did and there's another little trick here too you know I'm gonna peel this towards nope that just ripped off that's okay I'm gonna discard of that and there's a whole bunch of tape here so we've got some overlap of this tape but I'm gonna peel it off towards surfaces here and the reason why is that way I'm not pulling the caulk away and, and flinging it and see here in this seam I've got a lot of overlap so I've got a couple things I can do I can try scraping some of this off with a paper towel right now while well, I've got a little bit of tape on here still to so that way the overflow of the sealant is getting on the tape and not just just you know spreading all around on here which I don't want I want a nice clean edge but I think I still can get most of this sealant off with the tape itself and not have as much left over to have to smooth out. So I'm going to try that. And that is the purpose of the tape is to not only give us a clean edge, but to also capture some of the extra sealant, which is really, it's really hard to get an exact real good flow of sealant in uh, these corners here and stuff and you can see right there unfortunately the tape kind of flung back it it pushed the seal that was on there onto my hand so I'm going to clean up my hand and then I'm going to discard of this paper towel make sure I'm going to clean using a clean surface on this paper towel to get that nice and cleaned up and that way I'm good I'm not spreading any of the sealing around so that'll go away unfortunately this tape ripped here and so I'm going to use my fingernail here and this may be a good spot to pull out a little tool. I'm moving very slowly and, and that's intentional to make sure I'm not, if I move too fast, the tape will likely rip or it's gonna fling the caulk around or something like that. And now I've got a really tricky area here. I'm gonna get my pick tool to pick off this tape and that tape. I'm gonna clean this up with a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol on it and or some soapy water. And that'll help it let me get some of this tape off. I can also, I mean, the extra sealing off. I can also scrape it. And I think that's what I may do here. That might be the better method to get this extra sealing off here also. All right, so I'm gonna use my little, my little pick here to gently push the tape away. I'm not using the pick against the surface of the fiberglass extrusion, because that would scratch it. I'm just trying to use it to get in there and very carefully pull that little piece of tape away. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. As I scrape this away, I think this tape is going to get somewhat buried under this caulk, this sealant here, and I want to not let that happen. I want to keep it clean. And speaking of keep it clean, I want to make sure my picking tool is also kept clean. It's a tiny little thin little piece, and so very carefully I was able to pull that off with that caulk on there and get it in the trash, even though I want to stick to my hands. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some soapy water. I'm going to just gently, I've already sealed everything up here that I need to seal up. I'm just going to gently spray that down so that I can take a scraping tool and even uh, and just scrape this extra caulk off very carefully so I can try to keep a nice clean presentation of this. Again, this is really more here for looks although it is doing a little bit of a job of sealing and I'm gonna take a paper towel some rubbing alcohol and put it in there to clean off my my little uh, caulk smoothing and removal tool just keep that clean and plus rubbing alcohol that's on here will also work to prevent it from not only sticking to the caulk tool but also uh, create as much of a mess Make sure I'm really sealed up nicely. And now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my, my disposable rubber glove and I'm gonna put this on 
because I'm going to use my finger here to really smooth out this remaining sealant here just to make sure that I have a really nice edge in sealant. I can do this a little more finely, a little more control. And there we go. That's nicely smoothed out, much better than it was. By no means is this perfect, but it's pretty darn good. It will work. There we go. Now I'm getting really the look that I wanted. I'm just trying to be very careful here to not only make sure that I have this seam covered, but it's also nice and smooth, and that is. So, now I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this while I've got this glove on. I'm going to go take care of this tape up here. Let's go take care of this one. This one's going to be another tricky one. And this one's going to be tricky because, again, it's an early 45s. I've got a lot of little tape in here. And I'm just going to very carefully start with the, the top piece and slowly remove it and even wiggle the tape a little bit as I go up. And now that it's coming close to being done, I want to stabilize it with the hand with my glove on it since this tape has some caulk on it. And now I'm not getting that caulk on my hand. And I've got that nice and cleaned up. Now I'm going to come back and remove this final piece here, starting at the corner with my nail. There we go. Okay, now I'm feeling pretty good about this seam here, but I need to smooth it out again. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just get a little bit of soapy water on there. And I think what I'm going to do is before I use the caulk tool to remove it anymore, I am just going to come in here with my finger in this glove and just try to smooth this out once again because that seems to work really well. And I don't have too much caulk here to have to really remove any. So I'm going to try this in a couple different directions. Start with a fresh, clean finger. There we go. Make sure I don't have any real parts sticking out here on this leading edge that will be in the wind. Really clean that out. And you can see I've got a couple little extra spots here so I'm going to clean those up. I probably should have before I did that sprayed a little bit of soapy water along here and that would have kept that clean. But I think what I, my little caulk smoothing tool here and a little alcohol and, and on it and the soapy water on the caulk and I can really nicely smooth this out as I'm doing. And I'm just going to keep taking this all the way down this line just to keep it a consistent look on this. And now I'm going to take a dry towel and I'm just going to wipe up the water here, the soapy water, just to make sure it doesn't cause get in anywhere. And I'm just going to do a little inspection, make sure everything looks good. I'm happy with it. And I am. It looks it looks really great. And I say great, right? This is uh, it's about as good as you can get with these little fine edges and really with uh, manual tools here. This, this seam here was put on, we put this lower wall on, or lower floor, upper floor, on uh, back when we built the camper originally. We put that rear wall on and the lower floor on to really strengthen and button all that up. Well, I kept the lower section off uh, to make sure I could get in and out of the camp before I cut the entry door in. So this was done a while back and it's got a bit of a rough a rough uh, bead here. It didn't get done quite as well. Granted, this is when we we're building the camper. We had to put clamps on this to hold this up and so there's a little bit of a challenge with it. It's ill perfect, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to clean up that edge with a, a little uh, blade on it and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. And I'll do that before I put these caps on and get everything all nice and cleaned up. But now I'm really happy with this. Take a look. Let's get a closer look here. So you can see that 45 looks really nice. The leading edge here of this line looks nice and smooth. It doesn't have really any like little mountains to stick out or anything. It's pretty clean along here. It's not perfect, but it's pretty clean. This 45 here again is really the key part that's nice and clean. It doesn't have any real bumps or they catch water, you know, or air. And so that looks really great. So I'm happy with that. So that's my few little tips and tricks for sealing up these seams uh, after you put all everything on. So now I'm going to go in the inside and do the same thing for the inside. And that'll be coming up in a future video soon. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video with more of the exterior cleanup and sealing. 
and then we'll get to the interior and windows next. All right, so a few little tips on caulking up all these seams here. Is one is mask them on both sides. I've already pulled off the masking tape on this other side now that I've caulked it. And you wanna pull off the masking tape, I think probably within about 15 minutes because that's roughly the cure time. What I like to do is try to apply as little caulk as possible so I don't have those overlap. Sometimes it doesn't go really smoothly and so when I'm pulling out the tape, there's a little bit of a wall of caulk that gets left behind. And so I can come back in and smooth that out. I could certainly be more careful and do it with some more tape, but I feel pretty comfortable with this. And like in these corners here, I can always push it into the corner where this is just gonna be covered up with the cap anyways. Right here, I've got this big wall here that's built up when I pulled off the caulk tape. Let me see if you can see that here. So this big wall of caulk right here, it's really messy, right? Or I should just call it sealant because that's really what it is. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try, I know you can't really see the detail here, but I'm gonna try to come in very carefully I'm gonna plant my, my arm on the camper wall here to stabilize it. So I've got a really good stable arm so I'm not shaking as I move and as I walk. And try to really get a stable platform for my legs as well, my feet on the ground in a really wide pattern. So I can lean into it but not have to walk. Because every time you walk, you kind of balance your hand up and down. So I'm gonna very carefully now, pushing this wall towards the tape that's here and what I have here, of course, is this 45 degree butt seam between these two pieces of extrusions. And so I want to push it into that seam to make sure I have that well sealed. And then under here, I can let it smooth out because I'm not going to have any kind of wind or water resistance down there. Now I feel really good. If I pull the camera back over here, I think you'll see that looks really great. Now I still have to pull off this lower blue tape, so there's still a risk that that's not gonna go really smooth. And while I've got some caulk on my hand, some sealant on my hand, I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit. And a little string of the sealant just came off there, and sometimes these sealants do that. I've got a dirty glove now, so I'm gonna go ahead and change out this glove, discard it. These are the cheap disposable gloves. And that allows me to make sure that I can change them pretty regularly, keep my hands nice and clean. Do that, but there's also times when you need to have your gloves off, such as peeling this tape, or at least have one glove off. And when peeling this tape, you really have to grip an edge, and to grip that edge, you really need a free hand. And so I very carefully pull this. I do pull it slowly. I did have a little too much caulk here, even on the lowest setting on the electric caulk gun, and moving pretty quickly. There's still a little too much caulk to fill in these little small grooves here. And that now creates a little horizontal wall, which of course water will sit there. It's not gonna get in the seam because it's fully sealed. This is fully glued on. We seal it all the way across it. So it's not gonna become a, a, you know, a water issue or anything like that um, of water intrusion. I don't want that water building up there. It's just gonna create like a dirty pocket uh, you know, dirt that's going to build up as, as rain comes down. So I want to smooth it out so that water can shut off. But before I do that, I'm going to peel this one off too because I know I'm going to get a little bit of wall there too. I have a little bit of caulk and I pushed onto this tape. And so I'm going to need to come back in with the glove and just really gently smooth those out. These 45 degree modder joints are really tough because they are flush and so it's pretty hard to hide the caulk on those. Um, but there, and there is no cap to go over those, uh, at least that I've received. So I'm gonna peel this one off. I'm gonna try to do it nice and carefully and slowly so I don't string or fling this sealant anywhere, including onto myself so I keep myself clean. And I come back in and just try to smooth these out nice and gently. So I'm gonna do a little trick that I'm gonna show you by put, not only putting the gloves on, but also wetting them. And by getting them a little wet with either water or soapy water, that'll smooth that out. Um, sometimes I don't have a soapy water handy, but that works really well. If I've got alcohol handy, rubbing alcohol, I'll just use a very light coating of that on a paper towel. I'm gonna get my rubbing alcohol handy, my paper towel handy, some water. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this paper towel just slightly wet and that'll help. Now granted, all these adhesive sealants for the most part today all cure with moisture. So this is gonna force it to cure pretty quickly and that's a little bit precarious. So what I'm gonna do, instead of even using gloves, I'm gonna come with this wet paper towel and my fingers pressed 
into the shape I want the cloth and just gently push it in there. And now you notice I have my eyes right down at the level of the camper and my uh, uh, right down at the level of the sealant that I'm trying to push out so I can see it really well, not working on some angle uh, to miss that uh, little bit of a, of a variation in how it sets. This one's gonna be tricky here. And again, I'm gonna try to get my eyes so I can really see, make sure not putting my sleeve into any fresh cock and yet also using it to stabilize my position and meanwhile also looking back at my work and I knew I was going to get this little lip here at the end so I'm going to come back where I can really get in there and again push it around to the side here. And the end result is it came out looking really great. I'm happy with these lines and now it's time to seal up the windows and also the interior extrusions and new panels as well. Coming up next. Thank you for watching.